Okay, so we've seen the other IK based stuff. Let's have a look at digits here. Um, digits are straightforward. There's a couple of little things to how they work. First of all, these different types, finger, toe, digit. This is again, just naming convention. The structure is identical no matter what you choose. Um, you can change the number of phalanges and of course the number of digits that you want to add. So I'm just gonna add just a single digit for now. I'll make that a child of the main root here. Let's bring it down, just make it a bit bigger so as we can see it there. Um, and of course you'll notice that by default here, digits come in with this, you know, pre-bend to them to of course remind you that there is an IK option for them. And of course IK needs to have pre-bend. Um, so we rig it and of course we get um, just FK on every phalanx here by default um, and there you have it. So let's edit part and we'll see that there's also this FK digit option um, we'll set selected there and what we see that this does is it turns our digit into a single controller from the top here where turning on heading will operate all three digits for is of course the pitch and bank still only operates on the top phalanx there, um, but the others will blend in. And of course, you can use the offsets here to offset how that, you know, um, level at each digit is. So as you've still essentially got control over all three phalanges, um, but whilst being able to do quick flexing from the top item like that. Let's have a look at what else. First of all, let's see the spline option here. Um, again, it's just like other spline options. You get this end item here that is the run out of the spline and you've got the last item there to which that is effectively a child. So you can position it like that. Otherwise, the digit will just, you know, follow the curvature of the spline like this. Not often useful in many digits, you know, a fingers on a humanoid or something, this is pretty useless as a control method. But as you saw in the T-Rex example, there are certain situations where it can be fantastic to have. Let's have a look then at the IK as well. Um, here, IK, set selected. You see that you get IK goal here, and that of course gives you regular finger IK like this. This item, the last one in the chain, is the last phalanx is always on FK and of course that allows you to direct how the finger overall shapes and of course the IK goal is at the very tip of the finger so this allows you to have things um, where you have characters with their fingertips down on surfaces and similar like that or of course if they're bending out from the last phalanx and that's in contact with a surface, then that of course can stay constant whilst you know other stuff is moving. So that's handy there. Um, of course, again, the offset becomes visible um, and this allows you to essentially flip the direction of the IK um, because some characters can of course have back bending at certain knuckles. And so this little control there allows you to force the IK to go one way or the other. And so there's that. Now IKFK, this is one of the things to watch here. What I'm gonna do first, I'm just gonna add another digit like this. And let's also bring it uh, down into position here and just sort of scale it up like that. There we go, okay. So we've got two digits there um, that we've added added let's rig them like this select both of them we'll change their edit part here over to ikfk and set selected right now of course what we get is by default it's in fk mode and you can see that our goal there is auto snapped for us and we have an ikfk blend switch here for each finger when we throw it on we then have IK mode operating in the finger. By the way, I did forget to mention that the bank control here on the goal lets you swing um, the digit from side to side in this fashion there from the base that creates, that does the roll action for us. 
Now, of course, when you're dealing with fingers or toes on a character, this is a bit of a pain having, you know, if you wanted IKFK control, that's great, but having to throw a separate switch for every single digit could be a bit of a pain. If you've got a, you know, a hand and it's got five fingers on it and you want to be able to switch in between IK and FK control, then having to throw five switches every single time is going to be a bit of a nightmare. Um, that is what the make group toggle here is for. So if I select make group here, and I'm going to add, let's say, four digits. OK, and I'll just create that. That can be a child of main root. Yeah, that's fine. And let me just see this here. You'll see that we get a pack of four digits there, and they have this group root marker, OK, which gives them a, a group root, essentially. Um, and let's just bring these fellas down here somewhere and click, click. There we go. Come in on them so as we can see them more or less nicely like that. So we do our rig fit on them. And once again, I'm just going to grab these guys here, edit part, set them all to IKFK. And what you see we've got here is we've got a single null for the IKFK switch. And when you'll notice that that is named finger group um, and group one. And when that is on, it switches all fingers in the group to IK. So basically what this make group does for you is it is it only has an effect with IKFK switching. And what it does is all fingers within a given group are bound to a single IKFK switch. Do make a note, though, if I were to want to add fingers to this group, I wanted to add some more, then I need to turn make group off when I add the new fingers. Otherwise, I will be creating a new group. And so I can select here, let's say I wanted to add two to it, then I would add my two digits and I would select as their parent the group in this case, finger group root one that I wanted them to become part of. We click OK with that. Let them generate. We can rig fit. Of course, you'll notice that they've still generated into FK by default, but that's fine because we can just do the good old edit part. IK, FK, I use set all here. And what you can see is that their IK, FK is also being driven by this same group. IKFK null like that. As a small notice on this, of course, we did see when we had arms and legs that you have the ability to add fingers, you know, or toes um, directly when creating arms and legs. One of the things to be aware of is that when you add fingers and toes within an arm creation step, that will always create those fingers with a group root. So if you're wanting to put a hand on the end of your arm, you select how many fingers, how many phalanges per finger, and you will get a single IKFK switch that runs all of the fingers on that hand and generates a group root. You can then, of course, add more fingers to the hand by selecting that group root as their parent.